there, and welcome to Miss Red Nebula's Planko Tips. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about triggers. Triggers are one of the most powerful features of Planet Coaster's ride building system. A triggered event is simply something that happens when the ride vehicle passes a certain point on its track. They can be as simple as turning on a light, or incredibly complicated like chains of explosions or sounds or dozens of animatronics coming to life at once. For some really great examples, check out some of the jaw-dropping work by Tommy T or Pixelated. I'll link both of their respective channels in the description below. To set up a trigger, click on your ride and go to the last tab, Triggers. In this panel, you'll be able to see how many items are being triggered by your ride and how many trigger points are currently active. Click the Make Trigger Sequence button. Next, click Add Trigger to place your first trigger point. You'll see a numbered icon appear on your track, and the panel changes to show this first track trigger. Let's also add a second trigger so I can demonstrate a couple things. You can add up to 50 of these trigger points along your track. You can move the trigger along the track by clicking it and dragging. Note that the distance along the track can be seen in the triggers panel. You can drag trigger 1 past trigger 2 if you need to rearrange them, but note if you close and reopen the panel or click the Sort All button, the numbers will change. The triggers will always be numbered in the order they appear on the track. At the moment, my Connect Objects to Trigger button is grayed out. Yours might be too if you're building in a completely empty sandbox like I am. You must have at least one triggerable object somewhere in the park for the button to become active. There are hundreds of triggerable objects in the game, and many of the DLCs added dozens more with each pack. These include animatronics, special effects, lights, sounds, billboards, and sequencers. More on those later. Most are in the Scenery tab, but some are also in the Building tab. To locate them easily, click More Filters, open up Property, and tick the box next to Triggerable. A quick note. Any animated Theme Maker's Toolkit items you may have downloaded are also triggerable, but at this time are not shown when you filter by triggerable objects. Just remember that those fun animated items made by community members can be triggered too. So pick a triggerable object and place it somewhere. It can be literally anywhere in your park, proximity to the ride doesn't actually matter, but presumably you want it to be visible from your ride vehicle. Again, I'm going to place a couple additional objects to demonstrate some things. Triggerable objects play in a loop by default. Click on the object to see its properties. Here, you'll see the option for Activate on Trigger. You can check that here, but you don't have to. It'll automatically be checked when we add it as a triggered effect later. Underneath, you can change whether the object is looping, stationary, or plays once per a set number of seconds. Note that all of these will be overwritten if you activate it from a trigger. Click on the ride and go back to the Triggers tab. The button still says Make Trigger Sequence since we haven't added any items yet, but we'll change to say Edit Trigger Sequence once we do. Click it. Under Trigger 1, click Connect Objects to Trigger. All triggerable objects in your park will be shown in blue. In fact, you'll be able to see them even if they're behind walls or underground. Left-click to select an individual object, hold down Shift while clicking to select multiple objects, or click and drag to marquee select multiple objects. You can also deselect individual items by holding the control key and clicking on them. Note all selected scenery shows in the panel at the top right of the screen. When you're happy with your selection, click Confirm. The objects will finish their current animation cycle and then stop. They are now set as triggers. These two objects are now shown under Track Trigger Number 1. If you click the orange button to test the ride, you'll see that they both animate as soon as a vehicle hits that trigger point. As long as their animation has completed by the time the next vehicle arrives, they'll be triggered again, and so on. Just remember that some objects take a lot longer to complete their animation cycle than others. Let's look at some of the options in the Triggers panel. You can give the trigger a name by clicking on Track Trigger, and the arrow next to the name lets you collapse it. The play button lets you test all objects attached to that trigger. Click the three dots on the side. Here is another place to connect objects to this trigger, reset all delays to zero, and duplicate this entire trigger. You can choose the color for organizational purposes, and the yellow bulldozer deletes the trigger and removes all items attached to it. Likewise, you can change the name of triggered objects. 
Note this changes the base object's name too. The play button here just triggers that specific object to play. The time shown is the delay before the object plays. It's set to zero and will play immediately by default, but you can change this from one one hundredth of a second up to a thousand seconds. If we set the cannon to a three second delay, for example, you can see that the archer performs his routine first and then the cannon fires. There are also three dots next to each triggered item. In the case of animatronics, there are only a couple of options here. Duplicate the trigger event, center in on the object to locate it, and delete the trigger event. Some pieces have a lot more options, which we'll look at in a couple minutes. Let's go back and look at the cannon again. Now when you select it, you can see that it says it's connected to my ride, Strange Adventure, and the activate on trigger has automatically been checked. If you uncheck it, the item remains connected to the ride, but gives you a warning that it won't respond to external triggers unless that box is checked. Add another triggerable item somewhere near your second track trigger. Click on the ride and return to editing the trigger sequence. As you can see, the triggers have been collapsed to save space, which is why it's a good idea to give them names. Open them by clicking the arrow next to the name. Under Trigger 2 this time, click Connect Objects to Trigger. All triggerable items light up in blue again. Note that you can reuse items that have previously been triggered, again, as long as their animation from the previous trigger has finished. In this case, though, let's just choose the juggler. Now, as you can see, we have two objects attached to the first trigger and one object attached to the second one. The first objects play when the car passes the first trigger, remember that the cannon has a three second delay, and then the second object plays as soon as it hits trigger two. You can go on adding triggers like this all the way through your track. A lot of triggerable items work this way, they just play through a single animation and then stop when they're done. However, there are a number of special triggerable objects with unique features. First of all, lights and many of the special effects, such as fire, water, mist, bubbles, and more, can be turned on and off at specified times. For example, here I've attached these torches to a trigger. When you click the three dots next to the torch, you'll see some new options. Play on trigger turns the torch on for the length of time you choose, in this case three seconds, and then turns it off again. The second option, Activate on Trigger, turns the torches on and simply leaves them that way. They would stay on forever once activated the first time. Now let's see what happens if we duplicate this trigger, place it further down the track, and turn both of the torches to Deactivate on Trigger. As you can see, the vehicle then controls exactly when the torches turn on and exactly when they turn off again. The last option is Repeat Toggle on Trigger, which turns objects on and off repeatedly. This isn't so useful with particle effects like these fiery torches, but you can use it to make a great strobe effect with a normal light. The default only toggles every one second for a total of three seconds, but you can change these values to make a faster or slower blinking light for a longer or shorter period of time. Well, we've got these cool torches now, but the doors don't open. Doors have some great features too, let's take a look. I've added a trigger right when you get to the doors and attached them to it. Here again we've got a few new options. Play on trigger opens the door and then closes it after a few seconds. This used to be all we got, doors played for a set period of time just like any other animatronic, but this led to problems like the doors slamming shut in the middle of long coaster trains. They later added additional features. Open door keeps it open indefinitely, like how we activated the torches. Likewise, you can use close door on a later trigger. Finally, open door, pause, close door is just like it sounds. Specify the amount of time you want the door to stay open before it closes again. Many objects give us the ability to change their color, which is called flexi color. For objects that also have a trigger, we can actually change the color too. For example, here's a big scary scorpion. I've added him to a track trigger. Here you can see the different options for triggerable flexi color items. 
First off, to get the scorpion to play his animation, we'll need to have a trigger set up to play on trigger. Because we're going to target the scorpion again, just duplicate this trigger. You can trigger the same object more than once at the same time, as long as you're changing something different about it each time. The first trigger plays the scorpion's animation, so for the second trigger, let's make him change color. Change color on trigger makes the color change permanently, just like when we turned on the torches or opened the door. Choose the colors you wish to change the object to. Note that you can either make the colors change instantly, or you can fade them over a certain amount of time using the Fade to Color checkbox. At this point, you can either use Restore Color on Trigger to change him back, or you can apply another Change Color on Trigger to change to a different color yet. The psychedelic scorpion possibilities are endless. The last option is Swap Color on Trigger, this one simply changes the color for a set amount of time, again, you can fade it if you want, and then reverts it back to its original color. Let's go back to talking about lights for a moment, as they have both an activate option and a flexi color option, and can be a little complicated. Lights in Planet Coaster have two lit components, an emissive glow-in-the-dark material, and the actual light that affects the surroundings. You'll only see the actual light when you switch the time to night, or if you place the light under thick terrain. The emissive portion, however, is visible in daytime and remains glowing even when the light is technically off. If you want to hide the emissive part of the light, change its original color to black. When we look at the trigger options for lights, you can see both the ability to turn the light on and off, and the flexi color options. Remember that an object is deactivated by default when it's attached to a trigger, so the first thing we need to do is activate the light. When we play it, it won't appear to do anything, but it's necessary for the next step. We turn the light on, but because its color is black, it won't show. Now, when we want the light to appear on, we just need to change its color. Here I'll duplicate the light's trigger, and this time change to Swap Color for 3 seconds. Choose a color, and let's play the whole trigger. Again, we can use fading colors here to brighten and dim the lights. Like the scorpion, we can also fade one color into another to create a really cool effect. Finally, let's talk about sequencers. You can find these in the Scenery tab by clicking the Display Sequencers and Tools button. There are two types, the Display Sequencer and the Ride Cam Time Machine. I actually covered the Ride Cam Time Machine in detail already, check the link above. It can be used to change the time of day, as well as some awesome visual and audio effects. The Display Sequencer is very similar to how we've been triggering objects from our ride, except it's based on time rather than distance along the track. The sequencer itself has a few additional features, too. It can be used for creating things like fireworks and water shows, and having them play at specific times. I even did a video showing how you can use it to make music medleys for your park, too. Again, link above. But what makes this item especially powerful is that you can also trigger it from your ride. This is a great way to stay organized if you're making a really complicated attraction with potentially hundreds or thousands of triggered events. Here, I've set up a display sequencer with a series of explosions and fireworks. Instead of having all of this in one big glob in the ride's triggers, here I've organized it nicely and have it all set up to play the way I like. When we go to the track triggers, all we've got to do is connect the sequencer and it'll do the rest. A couple of other notes. In the last video, I mentioned this second button in the ride panel, which allows you to select all triggered objects attached to the ride. Here, we can see it in action. When you click it, it selects the ride, along with each triggered object, including all parts triggered by the sequencer. Everything I showed in this video works the same for both track rides and coasters, but I also had a question regarding triggers on flat rides. 
they are possible, just a little hinky. Flat rides are made up of a sequence of one or more animations. For each animation on the flat ride, you can add triggers. Some rides, like Horror Heights, begin their first animation right away. However, others, like the Scissor, have a warm-up time before they reach their first animation. For rides with a warm-up, unfortunately you can't trigger something right when the ride starts. Okay, I think that's it for triggers. Huge topic, but as I said, they're a big part of what makes Planet Coaster such a versatile ride-building tool. Hope you enjoyed my extremely weird example ride. In any case, feel free to like or comment, and if you want random updates from my little world of art and gaming, subscribe! If you enjoy what I do and are interested in supporting the channel, check out my Patreon. A big thank you to my current patrons. That's all for now. Bye!